you also like sold drugs, start selling drugs when? When you were 14? Nah, uh, it started like when I was 11. How did you get into that? Uh, just holding little packs and stuff like that, like stashes for niggas. I ain't start off big like I was this kingpin jump, jumping off a step at 11 years old. Nothing like that, nah. When you were 14, mm -hmm. you know, you were arrested? Yeah, 14 and a half. For, for murder? Yes. Okay, so what exactly happened? Right there in my neighborhood. How, how did that happen though? How did it? Uh, worst day of my life um, as a child. What, um, run into a fight, then had nothing to do with me or nothing. And she was fighting, trying to fight her way out of the crowd and with a bat. And I was standing on a curve, like in the street. The fight was going on, t on, on, on the side of the curve. And I was standing right here and started swinging a bat. And, Grace after midnight. Yeah. So you did six years. Six and a half. Six and a half years in yeah, prison. Yeah, don't forget my little six months. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's all that it seems like a lifetime. <sighs> so what was what was that like as a as a pretty much you're a teenager. Yeah, you know, you're very young. Yeah, being charged as a as a adult, you know, murder. Mm -hmm. And I'm fourteen and a half going in this jail. First, I go to city jail. You know, um, they don't have a juvenile section for the juvenile, so you have to be housed with the adults. But when, like, we had, they, they had us on lockup. So when we was on lockup for like a couple months and then they put us in our own little, little cell joint, then we got our little, went to school, all that type of stuff, had our little recreation things like that, and it was just hard, like growing up too fast, you know, and then you with these adults, you like, man, the fuck, they trying to, you know what I mean, tell you this, tell you that, like, you a child, you ain't trying to hear that, you know what I mean, like, go away about your business, but it was a couple of folks over there, like my aunt had got locked up, and, you know, things like that came over or whatever, then when I went and got my time, my prison time, I went to prison. That's down Jessup, Maryland. That's grandma house, man. That's a whole nother ball game. You know, it's time, it's time to really put your grown women's shoes on and go ahead on and do your time. It's either you gonna cry about it or you gonna let people take advantage of you because you're a child or you gonna stand on your own two feet and, and hold your own down. Yeah, I, I held my own down. You know, it was just, I had to grow up fast. Now tell me how was like your first night? My first night, uh, wait, what, when I first got locked up yeah. or in prison? Mm -hmm. When my first night, uh, it was it was cool. All I was putting in my mind is like, I'm ready to do my time and, and get up out of here, you know? But when I was there, my uncle that took me on my little first little date, whatever, he got killed. So it was like, that was like two years into my bit, into my bit. So, no, it was, no, it was three years, three years into my bit. And it was like, I just had to really wake up because I was down there, I was juvenile. I don't have life. I don't have 20 years. I was wilding, you know, just wilding, doing whatever I want, fighting who, whatever, try to stab who, whatever. We out here wilding and I'm a juvenile. I didn't care. Until that day, I, well, that night, I got that, my homegirl, um, Trella, she from, like, um, my, 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 um, my hood, she was on the phone, because I didn't get on the phone that night. And she was like, yo, did you call home? And she looking at me, because I'm kind of happy. I already had this migraine for, like, a week. And she was like, you need to call home. And I'm looking at her like, what the fuck is wrong? What's going on? What's going on? I'm thinking they may say something about my, my grandmother or something like that. Nah, she was like, it's about Arnold, call home. And I got on the phone and I just zapped out. Mm -hmm. So that pretty much got you to straighten up in prison. Yes. Right? Yeah. Um, and then that I wanted to come home, you know, faster, you know? Like in prison, people, your friends, and everybody always say, 
Oh, be there for you, ride with you, uh, put money on your books. That shit will last for six months. Come on, man. Hey, all right, I got a bill, sir. Come on, man. He was the only one. I mean, him and my grandmother and um, my father, Anthony Jones, free Anthony Jones. They, um, before he went in, he put a large amount on my book, so I still had money. And then my uncle, he just always, like every week, uh, put like $300 on my book, so I never went without, you know. And then, like, and my grandmother sent me 200 whatever. I never asked her for nothing. I barely called home because I didn't want the phone bill to go up. I just wanted to do my bid. I got myself in, my, in this trouble. I get myself out. Yeah. You know? So tell me about your final day in prison. Man, I didn't even know I was coming home because I had went on lockup and they had took my good days. And they took and they, and they gave it, I was writing a war and form back because I was on this good spree. I did um, a whole year f um, infraction free. So I was asking for my good days back. And they surprised me, gave me my good days back. And the people was like, yo, you gotta go over and sign your papers. I was like, what papers? I thought I was ready to go to um, a halfway house or something. And they was like, nah, you going all the way home. I was like, what? Man, I gave everything away, except for my mail. <laughs> <laughs> TV, radio, everything gotta go. I ain't taking none of this home, for real. Whoever needed it here, I got you. Mm -hmm. I don't need it, I'm going home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I was the happiest day of my life, man. And I came straight home and got me some crabs. You get back into, you know, population. You pretty much start a, new, start a job and they give you, you've only been there for like how many, two weeks? And they fired you. Yeah, I was working at, um, I was working at Ford Bumper. I was working at a, a bookstore. And before Bumper, I was making, I'm just coming home. My first job in my life. I'm making, what, uh, like, just say $15 an hour, making four bumpers. Good money. I'm just coming home. Man, they fired me two weeks later because of my background, you know? And I'm like, huh? I go to the book factory. Book factory start me off at eleven fifty an hour. I'm like, man, this ain't about nothing, but I'm, I got to do it. I'm on parole. They fired me. My background. I'm like, what am I going to throw a book at somebody? You know what I'm saying? I probably need to so somebody gets some education, but you know, like, I mean, what up? What am I gonna beat somebody with a book? Like, I ain't, come on, man. They fired me for my background. Went to a car wash. I was there for 24 hours. You know, I left. So when my checks came in from that, I went and caught me some shit, and I'm back on the block. I ain't gonna keep going through this. And I just had the car wash, you know what I mean? That was like my job. So you just showed up just to show your parole yes. officer that you were you had a stable yes. job, but you still was in the streets. No, nah, yeah, I ain't, I ain't with none of that. I'm here, she, oh, she here, how you doing? I'm here. Now, did you feel like, were you ever scared that you were gambling a lot though? You were I, I mean, life is a gamble. Life is a gamble. What I'm gonna do, keep on, Letting people fire me and I be struggling, can't feed me. No, I'm I'm a very independent person. I don't I try not to ask nobody for nothing, you know. But if I do ask you something, it's gotta be, you know, within my my immediate family, you know, things like that. My 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 closest friends, something like that. But nah. In a time of need, you know who your true friends are, you know? So, I mean did you have any like pe people criticize you for basically like instead of like breaking the cycle like there was drugs in your family before and then it's just like you're going back into it by selling it did they ever like no they ain't look down on me or nothing like that and they'd probably say can I help pay some rent or something I don't even live there so long as it Probably, and this is for family too. As long as it's benefiting them, you know, they always want to be there probably with their hand out. They don't care if you get in trouble or not. Mm -hmm. You know, as long as you could provide for them, they don't care. But, but now, like, do you, what, are, what are your advice to some people that are, you know, that do that? Do you what, tell them this? Drugs? Yeah, do you tell them this I mean, thing? I can't, I can't tell nobody, you know, not to stop selling drugs. I can't. You know, all I could do is share my 
my experiences and my life stories with you. You know, hopefully you'll get something from that. But, you know, I, it's, you got to like people like I just said, I just got fired from this job, that job like that is stressful. And especially if you probably, I don't have any kids, so I know if somebody was in my shoes that had kids or just had to provide for this household, they probably, they got to do the same thing or you want to be without. It's cold nights and it's hot summer nights, you know, like you need some air, you need heat, you need to put some, some, some something on your stomach, I don't care if it's oodles and noodles and hot dogs, you know what I mean? So it, it don't matter, as long as you provide and your stomach is not empty. You know, however you get it, just don't, I mean, just, just don't go the wrong, the, that is the wrong way, but I'm just saying, like, all uh, the bullshit that comes with selling drugs and being out there. I mean, just, I mean, just stay sucker free, that's all. In 2011, you got into, like, some trouble, right? Yeah, some bullshit. Right? Yeah. So, so tell me how, how, what happened, mm. and, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I mean, when I got in the last trouble, I wasn't even in trouble, you know, and... You were already a star by now. Yes, I was already on a wire, whatever. So these people had whoever phone tap. I called my brother, you know, and, and tell him, you know, bring me some ooh in the house. I smoke marijuana, my nigga. Leave me the fuck alone. Yeah, I mean, who don't? I mean, but it's going over a wiretap. My brother fucked up. I don't know who else. Else, my brother was my co-defendant. That's the only one. No, it was um. I had three co-defendants. My brother, a nigga I don't even fuck with. So you can't compare, put us together. You know what I'm saying? And a fiend. That's how I knew it was some bullshit. Cause my lawyer Googled to see who and looked up to see who the uh, last person is. I'm like, what? Like, come on, man. Like, it was a bunch of bullshit. I got a record, a fucked up record. I only had three co-defendants. You know what I mean? My brother, you know what I mean? He good. It was a bunch of bullshit. You understand what I'm saying? Like, it, man, that was uh, a lot of money waste for nothing. It, this shit hurt my fucking feelings, man. Shit hurt my fucking feelings, man. It's just, it's just crazy, man. Do you think they were just trying to get a big name attached to exactly. this? Exactly. That's what they got a big name. Yeah, you know I mean, my name. Guess that's all you was hearing. You didn't hear about nobody else's name. All you kept hearing is Felicia Snoop Person caught on a wire. Caught on what wire? Like, come on, man. Y'all, that y'all blowing this up for nothing. Like, it, y'all got what, like two pounds of weed out somebody's house, not even my house, and uh. Like, I get to talk about because everybody done got that time. Anyway, motherfucking, motherfucking um, two pounds of weed and like 60 grams or something, or whoever got out that house. Like, what the fuck? And y'all locked up like 80 people, 65 people, whoever, but I only had three co defendants? Like, come on, man, leave me alone, please. I'm trying to make it better for myself, man, and my family, please, man. I'm like, that's, that's why I don't even talk or the phone no <laughs> They say, yo, bring me in blood. Nigga, I don't know what you talk about. Leave me alone. <laughs> Word up. Well, man. you got to use cold words. But not even that. They make the cold words whatever they wanted to make it to be or whoever the fuck telling. Tell on my brother. That's my brother. Not at all, nigga. Never been a rat. Never will be. Believe that. Free fat boy and a couple of them. And, but fuck the rest. You hear me? Mm-hmm. So, um, do you do you think after the, well, w did you get anything out of it, or you just got, walked away clear? Nah, man, I had to fucking cop out to um, well, I copped out to uh, what well, um, three years probation, but I, and it's the thing though, like, and it's it was like other couple people whatever that probably got old school names whatever. You know what I mean, they was in it. You ain't hear nothing about them. All you hear was my name. You understand what I'm saying? I get to smile about it because it's a thing in my past. I live and you learn. You just over. But, you know what I mean, you don't hear enough about them. Them people got, they got locked up. Say we got locked up uh, a Monday morning. They out Tuesday morning. And I'm sitting there. I did three, 33 days. They won't give me a bail or nothing. And the only thing you got me on here saying is who we. Come on, man. But everybody, I ain't gonna say everybody, a couple people, niggas know, a couple people got out 24 hours. I was with the state 
They was with the feds. You know, the federal is more, you know what I mean, more harsh than the state. You understand what I'm saying? Come on, man. Don't, don't y'all niggas scream. But yeah. So is that what made you want to well, leave Baltimore after because that? Because I still want to be an actress. Like, I, I, when I got on The Wire, I loved it. I, I started seeing new things, different things, traveling here, traveling there. And then not even just traveling, it's just the craft of acting. You know, I love it. You know, like, it's just, it's just an amazing thing that I didn't even know that I could do. You know, God God make that happen and brought it out me. Like, here, how can I get on a wire and I didn't know nobody? He sent Michael K. Williams just to start it off here. This your, this your little angel. I love my bro. This your angel. This is one of your garden angels, you know? Yeah. You definitely had, like, a rough beginning. And then it just seemed like it went just on the right path for you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then when it's trying, and it's for the people that's out there that's trying to, you know, in the streets, halfway in the streets, halfway in the industry. Like, you know what I mean? You got you to gotta keep going. It don't even matter. It's going to have bumps and, 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 and bruises and all that. But just keep going, man. Just keep going. Don't let nothing stop you. Don't let nothing stop you. The hate. Or whatever, just don't let it stop. You keep going, man. If you feel it in your heart, if you ready to be this this um, big NBA star, or oh yeah, shout out to um, um Tank Davis, Lord Tank. He been through a lot. I, I love how he's shining. Floyd Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather, weather is just signed him with the money team. Yeah, young boxer coming out of um Baltimore. I love that because he been through trials and tribulations. You know, I done seen this little boy just you know, had it rough, you know what I mean? Everybody had it rough, you know? Man, and look how God bless you, you know what I mean? He probably got something going on in L.A. where he might have needed that shit. I don't know why he showed up with it. Probably thinking like, man, look, you know, little young wild nigga from Chicago like guns. Want to see a gun, it was a nice gun, it was nice. Little tonight, I just got in a little altercation, and I guess, that other case was so weak, they wanted to put something on me. And so I, they charged me with a riot in the penal facility. So it was really just a regular fight? It's a little physical altercation. 